Hi, and welcome to Story Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got HPH Models 132nd Fokker Wolf. This is the FW189A1 weirdo looking thing. Yes, this is the one which sort of has the engines and then obviously you've got that sort of strange cockpit in the middle. It's all cantilevered off to one side. It's one of those sort of weird aircraft that came out of World War II. But again, it's very nice to see it in 132nd scale, something you're probably not gonna find through mainstream manufacturers. Now, I highly recommend you go off and look at all my reviews, but obviously have a look at my HPH videos. This is the second one in sort of a little mini series that we've done where one of my members, He's got far too many kits on his hands, clearly, has sent me one along on loan to review so you guys can have a look at it. Now, these aren't cheap. They are resin. They're mixed media and everything else. And we spoke about it a lot when we were talking about, obviously, the previous builds on this particular one. But generally, they are beautiful kits. If you take your time, working with resin is even easier, I think, in some ways, than working with uh, plastic. Plastic, it tends to bend. Uh, you can come out of shape. You get sink marks, things like that. Resin, even if you snap it, tends to break very cleanly and you can just with a drop of super glue poke it back together and you're good to go easy to sand but usual things like we say with all these things remember health okay sanding resin is not good for you it's fibrous it gets in your lungs like velcro so please if you're doing a lot of sanding work things like that then wear a face mask just to protect yourself so down in the kit <clears throat> as we can see we spoke about these before uh, at length about the boxes and various things they do have a very nice sort of flip top lid okay and then we can grab something heavy just to weigh this down a second. As you can see, the actual uh, box is rammed full of various bits and pieces. So we have the obligatory chocolate in there, which that one's in there that time. <laughs> uh, we've got a little leaflet, obviously, about HPH models. You'll find no manual, you will find it actually on a disc. It's a great way of keeping down the cost. Okay, we've got one printed out already. Okay, and then we get our little thing. So we've got quite a bit of photo etch, as you can see in there. We've actually got some um, uh, uh, the fabric seat belts, which are great because you can sort of just roll them up in your hands uh, and away you go with those. But these are by like HGW. They're beautiful. We've used them before in lots of our builds. Obviously, we've got a mask set in there and we've got some decals, which have a look at in a moment. And then you've got the box. And as you can see, beautifully laid out. They're all hidden away down in here, the various parts. And we'll have a look at that in a moment. So starting off with the instruction manual. A couple of ways of dealing with it. Like we said before, you can print it off, okay? Just put it on your computer and you can print this off as this one's been done already for us to have a look at. The other way, of course, is obviously you can do it on your computer and just scroll through it on a PDF. So if you're like me and you've got your computer set up with a screen in front of you, just as easy to have a look. You can download it, obviously, direct from the website. You can put it onto your tablet or just look it on your tablet. The great thing about the tablet is, and things like that, if you're a little bit techy, you can expand the image to get a really good idea of what you're doing because you'll see as you look through, uh, flick through the manual here, it's a build along okay and that's the nice thing about it it's not just step one through to 25 it's actually a build along so you can see exactly what you're doing with it so as we can see down on here we have the uh, manual so usual thing we've got down here is we know we've got color photo edge normal photo edge we've got your decals down there the fabric seat belts and a mask set in amongst all this gorgeous resin then the resin themselves so it's quite nice seeing it like this because it gives you an idea where the parts are because obviously it's not like trees that tell you know on sprue g or something else so you are going to have to play a little bit of a hunt just to find them to have a look down on there like that okay but generally they are sort of all in sort of number order as you make your way through as you can see okay and we've got clear parts as well which are really nice to see some of the larger parts then obviously we've got down here the color call outs things like that down in there as well which is really nice and then working your way through so working with the fabric seat belts okay then we've got obviously talking about the actual the parts of them and then just generally in the construction now as i said it is a build along this one and we're not going to spend uh, a couple of hours going through this so we will flick through quite lightly but as you can see you've got various things like photo etch parts going to be going onto the resin things like that okay but also it shows you various things about lining bits up things like that cutting bits off putting them all into position I'm working right the way through, okay? So it shows here about marking up things so you get things all lined up and orientated and through the entire build. And as I said, the nice thing about these, these are almost like a build along step by step versus just, as you said, a couple of parts and you're done. As you can see, we've got plenty of details down on the inside, okay? And we're talking about the seat there, putting in those harnesses you would have made up the HCW ones and putting it all in there working right the way along and the nice touch with these is again you actually get photos of the real thing so for alignment issues again different angles showing the same thing so you get an idea of where fits where 
and everything else a lot easier, okay? And then just generally working your way through the entire build, okay? And then you can see gear being fitted on there and then more work going on there than again, showing the gear are built and done. And that's the nice thing. So then you get very nice detailed engines down into this. So you can see all that engine work. And if you want to do, obviously you could cut it open. That very unique uh, type of spinner that they have on these as well. And there it is all done, as you can see, put together. And then working through your flaps and your slats and all those lumps, bumps and good bits all over this guy. And then talking about obviously masking inside and out. Probably need to do something like that on this particular guy, purely because uh, it's pretty exposed on the top. The actual turrety type areas and all that gorgeous glass work but in on the front there. Talking about obviously all the bits being added into the clear parts as it makes its way through and then you end up something like this. Okay, again, pretty much of a one. And then we've got down here markings, decal placements, the usual things as you can imagine. As you can see this guy right the way through. <clears throat> And again, a unique looking aircraft, nice in the winter camo as well, as you can see right the way down on there like that. It's not a kit for the beginner. We said this about before, a lot of people are put, up, put off heavily by this, but in the same notion, don't be, because it's not as difficult as you think. It's one of those things where you're going to take your time with it, step by step, and just work your way through it quite methodically uh, in and out. So as you can see down in here, We've actually got the seat belts. These are the ones before. We've used them a few times in our own builds as well. The great thing is you put them all together, you roll them up in your hand, get them all nice and soft, and that way they're very pliable just like the real thing itself. The buckles will be elsewhere, okay? Then we've actually got some very nice brass barrels, and we've got the gun sights down in here as well, as you can see right the way through like that. So that's a nice touch. The mask set we were talking about. Again, don't take any notice, it shrinks back. It's because it's on like a, a plastic instead of the paper type, but generally no problem at all with that one. Then we've actually got the photo etch. Has he lucked out here and got two because they're stuck together? I think he has. He's actually managed to get two sets. They were actually stuck together. And I've just pulled one apart. I don't know if he even knows that himself. But anyway, color photo etch on one side down on there like that. So things like, you know, rudder pedals, uh, instruments, things like that. And then obviously you've got the harnesses and all the things, and that's what's gonna go on with those, uh, with the fabric seat belts. Then on the other side, we got various items down in here. So we've got some extra detail for the actual gun, uh, for the gun magazines going through on there. And then obviously we've got things like radiators and various things, adding more detail. And then there's another one, I do believe, in amongst this again. Okay, so you've actually got two sheets. I should be able to get this closed again, if we can do this correctly. If not, I've got two, you'll never know, okay. But there will be another sheet in here with even more stuff, with all the flats. If I can get it out, come on you, get let go. Any trouble with these? Because obviously you don't want to bend it. But there we go. Beautiful, highly, highly detailed, all of those on there, as you can see. Literally just like that. Really very, very nice indeed. And now I've got to try and get it back in the bag. Quick tip, fold it over, back on itself like that. Then all you've got to do is get it in the cardboard section. That's why it was all stuck together. So at least he can, if he makes a cock up, he does have a backup. Okay. So a couple of sets of those, which is really, really nice. And then the decals. Okay, so the decals themselves, I don't know. Oh, this will peel off to reveal. Again, a little bit of trouble with this one. I don't want to wreck, as I say, it's not mine, but I just want to show you the, the detail on these. Again, this is the trouble. It's peeling up the carrier film at the same time as the markings. We'll just do half a pull. But you can see, it looks like they are printed in one which they are, which is a little bit odd. These are wet transfers, as they're saying. But it looks like they are completely in one. So you might have to cut them up before putting them on, unless I'm missing the beat here, but it looks like they are all in one. 
Okay, so just be uh, mindful of that. They're not just going to float off individually as you make your way through. So the box itself, I'll tell you what, for a change, we'll start with the clear stuff. <coughs> okay, so clear parts. <coughs> a few little bags. Again, very difficult to mould something like this in one, but they've managed to do it. That's actually really very, very nice indeed. It's pretty clear as well, considering the complexities of doing that. I've got one little mark just there, and that is it. I am amazed about that. Again, very, very nicely done. Extremely complex to try and mould something like that in one and have it so clear. Yes, you could do it just solid, but to have it in a clear part, actually, that is very nice indeed. Then a lot of the others you can see, all going to need a little bit of cleanup, get rid of these blocks and everything else like that, and you'll be absolutely fine. There's the tail, I do believe. Very nicely done, clean, crisp, sharp. Okay, there's the gun station on the back. Again, really very, very nice. Other part of that tail, beautifully clear. Look how clear that is. Again, this is technically resin. Uh, we've got down there nav lights, which are even coloured, which is a beautiful little touch. And a couple of other little lights down there on there. And then we've got... Fantastic, beautiful, the bulges, clear, and again these side ones, very, very nice indeed. There's the other side, really very, very nice, and that will be a duplicate just down in there like that, so we'll pop those back just to pop them in. Okay. <clears throat> again, it just shows the quality you know, of the parts. It makes you wonder how many of these they have kicking around where they've been uh, obviously used and then, <clears throat> you know, gets the old air bubble or the little blemish in there they have to throw away because I've never seen one with that at all. The quality control is absolutely second to none on all of their parts. So that is really very, very nice indeed. Okay, I'll wiggle that back in in a minute. So, if we start with some of the smaller parts for a change, and then we'll work to the bigger ones. So, usual thing, working your way right the way through here. In with the bags. Always, I say it in every resin review, never throw away any of the tiniest bits, because sometimes they can break off in packaging like this, and then all it takes is a tiny little bit of super glue, and it will go back together, and you'll have no problem with it. So as you can see, we've got here some very nice stuff. We've even got a little buckle moulded into this guy, which is a very, very nice touch indeed. As you can see on that, beautifully cast, very strong, very nice. And then we've got bottles, we've got piping work, we've got, looks like a little drum. Again, very fine. You can look at the thinness of this. This is as good as any uh, injection moulded plastic. We've got the control yoke, okay, a little bottle just on there literally just like that that's really nice indeed and again these smaller parts beautifully cast that would be a duplicate again small little things and again here there's obviously a part in here that's broken off which is probably that little pipe we saw earlier that i think we've really popped in the bag now um, so yeah just be mindful of these little things coming off they do but these little guys obviously you've got to take out the webbing inside but that's a you know get in there with a fine blade and just tap at it and that'll pop out no problem at all and there we go it's the other side of that one we've got the seat again very thin look at the thickness of the, the actual resin on that incredibly thin very nicely done indeed it's another one of those uh tail wheel i think that is the actual part for that <clears throat> we've got a very nice crimped hose system on that one again very nice indeed again Beautifully done. And then some of these other parts got a light housing, and then the other one, perhaps it's for the main gear. Now I'm looking at these parts down here and just deciding if it is flash or a part. I'm pretty sure all of that is just flash, so we can uh, not worry about that one too much. All right, let's pop that one now. Let's get this one wrapped up in there. Okay, so some of the other bits. 
Okay, we've got some of the left and right and the formers, I assume, for the wings. Reinforced, we've actually got metal running through these. Uh, a lot of people worry about resin over time, if it's going to droop and sag. Yes, I often worry about that as well. But it's nice to see this is reinforced with metal uh, rod running through it, which will then hopefully counter any droopness you might find with resin. So, if we come over to this guy... Okay, so this is the tail booms. Again, really very, very nice indeed. No problem at all. Hopefully the camera can pick this up. Beautiful recessed detailing all the way around on this guy as well. Okay, if I just pull the cameras in just a little bit. There we go. Hopefully you can see that on the tail. There we go. So again, recessed riveting and all the parts right the way through on this. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, no problem again. Mirror side, obviously, because we've got two tails coming off of this. Again, on the inside. Parts are numbered as well, which is a very nice touch as well, just to see that on those. But again, some nice detail for the inside. Now we're gonna get, obviously, double sets of that. So what we'll do is we'll just wrap one and then we can wrap two. Because obviously there is going to be four of those because of the way it is. Okay. Then we've actually got the wings. So again, we just take one of each. Again, it's that thing. The, the thing is I love about this type of effect as well is that because a lot of this has been done by hand and things like that, you've actually got differences in the riveting and it's not always a perfectly straight line like you might find with some manufacturers, obviously when it's CAD and injection molding. With resin, it tends to be just a little bit more realistic. So some of it isn't perfect, but that's what I like about it. So, you know, for instance, down here, the riveting, catch it in the light just there, it pops along, bobs along and there's a slight difference in it. Um, and a couple of little areas as you look around it, there is just slight differences and it just makes it look so much more realistic. But hopefully you can see the surface detail on all of that is absolutely fantastic. Second to none, right the way through. Very, very nice indeed. And then again, a little bit of work on the inside uh, just to show a little bit of framework, but the rest of it is beautifully polished out mould. And again, We've got this guy down on here, which I assume this is the uh, underside. It's got a little landing light, which we know we cut open. We saw in the instructions, got a little bit of photo etch going to go on that one. Where's the light? There's the light. There we go. And you can see all that gorgeous detail in all of that. Really very nice indeed. Again, clean, crisp, sharp, beautifully done mold on that. Very good. And also the thickness of the resin. I don't think you can have too much in the way of droop on this. I think it should stand up to uh, life quite nicely. Okay, so over in here we have two very large bags with all the bigger chunks and lumps that are gonna make up cockpit engines and everything else like that. So, rokey grokey, they like to pack them in. Okay, so we'll start off with these. Let me just move that somewhat out of the way. Okay, so beautifully one-piece cast, the engine nacelles. Very nice indeed, and you can see lots of detail and riveting on all of these parts. And again, nice one-piece cast, even the front beautifully done. It's going to need a little bit of clean out, but as we know, that's pretty much all you're going to need to do. Very nicely done indeed. So we've got two of those. Very cleverly done, and also extremely light. It's not heavy at all, any of this. Then we got the underside. So that's that big underside that goes through. Again, very nice detail on all of that. So great to see the level of detail. And you can see all the parts coming through. Really nice, again, polished on the other side. Uh, ailerons, great details on these, you can see. And on the other side, very nice indeed. So we've got a couple of those. Uh, this I assume is the tail for the tail plane again with the trim tab. Very nicely done as well. Okay. 
Then we, I assume this is a fuselage sides and things like that. I could be wrong. Um, and say not too much on this guy, but again, really nice level of detail, riveting work all the way through. Very nice indeed. So we've got a couple of those. Okay. Very nice again. Fantastic. Beautifully done. Okay, so we've got a little bit of wire running through this guy, as you can see. Okay, to give you some strength, uh, I assume this is the uh, tail on this. Now, the tail, I assume, retracts up into the tail plane, does it? Or does it come down one side? Not too sure on that one. But again, reinforced again with metal, just to give you that extra bit of strength and take the worry away. Okay, we've got the rudders. So we've got a couple of rudders, as you can imagine, for both tail plane or tail boom sections. Very nice indeed. Centre plates. Okay. Got a little bit of bulkhead here, I assume, or something. Again, really nice. And then some of the smaller parts. I think it's the top of the engine. Very nice. Tyres. <clears throat> Again, minimal sort of detail. To be honest, they look like worn tyres, which is quite nice. A little bit of work on them. I think it'd be absolutely fine. No weight on wheels, which is a shame, but... Uh, you know, wouldn't take too much to just put a little flat spot in there. There's the actual tail wheel itself. Again, really nice. Bomb load. So we've got four bombs. That sort of standard World War II German bomb. Okay. <clears throat> Spinners. I'm hoping for more. I've only seen two. Um, so, yeah. Nicely done. Again. And then we've got the actual... Um, sorry, props, uh, spinner caps. So it's just two blades. I'm sure there must be another one around in. Ah, there we go, sorry. So we do have all of those. There's the spinner caps and some gorgeous legwork. Again, cleverly molded, as you can see. Very nicely done, all of those. And again, I'm spying a little bit of wire just in there, just to make them a little bit more stronger and it stops them all falling over. Okay, then <clears throat> we've got the last bag, which will be all those nice flat sections. Okay, so we try and keep it all as is. So as you can see, great level of detail on all these. Very cleverly done on this sort of sheet, so it's easy to keep them all in one place, and you can just sand them down to get them off. And again, great work in these. Beautifully done, no problem at all. We've got another system there with a little seat even got nice little details in those work for the engine a few of these popped off so that's why you have to keep an eye on it because as I say we have got a couple of little loose guys running around here again very nice bulkhead good level of detail on that okay and all these smaller works for the framing around the canopy and the various items got an ammo can there. there's another one for engine work there for the other side <clears throat> and again very very clean good to see we don't get things like air bubbles and stuff like that there's all those magazines don't forget your photo etch is going to go across the top of these to super detail them up very nice indeed some little wheel hubs again for the gear very nice then and then more internals running right the way through very good indeed and again, we've got quite a few sheets of these, which is, it's a nice way to keep it. Far better to have it on these sheets, I think, than to have them individually done. They're easy to get off. It's literally like being on paper. But again, very nicely done. Right the way in these. Bomb racks. Very nice. And then... Very, very good. Okay, this is with the framework and the side walls and everything else like that. Again, very nicely done. Beautiful work on all of those. And then last up in here, we've got a little separate bag with some more little parts in there as well. And that, I think, is it. I think that's all of it. Again, it's one of those kits. Don't be thinking you're gonna be putting this together as a weekend build, because clearly you are not. It's one of those builds where it's gonna take you a little bit of time, 
treat each section as like a sub assembly as you're working your way through and I think you'll absolutely be fine. Don't forget HPH models as well if you've ever got a problem with any of the parts shoot them an email they're absolutely fantastic customer service and they'll get your replacement part out for you or if you break something I'm sure you can chat them up and they'll help you out as well. So from that point of view it's not like you got one of those kits where what happens if something goes wrong or anything else I'm not going to have them to fall back on. I'd say that they're really for more the advanced modeler but at the end of the day if you're taking your time dry fit everything, test fit in other words, before you commit to glue you're going to be absolutely fine. It's just that thing of knowing exactly where it goes and to make sure it all fits together before you come near it with glue. Okay, So from that point of view, tape things together, just see how they go, use a little bit of blue tack or white tack just to hold things in, get a good idea of what's going on. The bit where you start to lose the plot and you're not sure how it's going to go and you try and just stop pushing it in is the bit where the kit will come back and bite you. But that's pretty much the same of any model kit out there. But these are beautiful done done with love as I said before and they come out and will make something really really spectacular that you're not going to see at definitely many model shows as you make your way around. So there we go that's another great kit from HPH the 132nd Fockerwolf FW189A1.